This is Mr. Strasburg's sixth grade art history class, and the highlights start now. Welcome to WJPS News. I'm Yareli Ramirez. And I'm Russell Guerra, and you're watching The Highlight. Here's a special message from the WJPS administrators. Hello, WJPS, and welcome back. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it's a time for being grateful uh, to be back here in school, to be seeing everybody again. Um, and we're also time to honor those traditions that we have. So speaking of traditions and thankfulness, I'm very thankful to go back to the tradition and bring back the WJPS highlight. Enjoy. Just wanted to say, welcome back everybody. You were truly missed these past 18 months. The building was empty without you. And it is joyous to see our halls filled with smiles and laughter coming from all of you and learning going on. And having said that, Thanksgiving is traditionally celebrated with friends and family, and this year it might be a little bit tougher uh, to get together and celebrate with our friends and loved ones because of the coronavirus. So it's even more important to reach out to all of those close to you and around you and let them know how grateful you are for everything special in your life because every day is a gift and that you should be thinking of everybody. Let them know that, share that with them and be thankful for all that you have because we truly are all blessed. Happy Thanksgiving to all my WJPS family, the entire community, and especially our students, staff, and their families. Thank you. Hi everybody, Dr. Warner here. Just want to welcome everybody back. It has been a long time since we've been together and I am thrilled that we're actually learning in person. Um, I'd like to wish everybody a very, very happy Thanksgiving. There's always something to be thankful for, and I'm sure thankful that we're all back in the building together again. Isabella Torres reports on traffic safety around our school. In recent weeks, traffic congestions have occurred outside of the school. These jams occurred during arrival and dismissal times at both the middle school and high school entrances. These backups have made it difficult for both teachers and students to get to school on time. Like whenever we're trying to get to the school entrance, like there are like 500 cars just like lining up and it takes like forever just to get to the end of the block. These traffic jams have led to severe backups and delays. Double and even triple parking often occurs, which causes safety issues on Francis Lewis Boulevard. Teachers and students have become increasingly frustrated by the lack of traffic supervision. It's horrible. It's dangerous. This caused triple talk. The buses can't go by. The little kids try to cross the street and there should be a crossing guard and a cop. The school has sent out an announcement regarding procedures about dropping off and picking up students in a safe and timely manner. However, this hasn't made a big impact on the situation. This increasingly important problem has students buzzing about possible solutions. Uh, like elementary schools have, they have a cross guard, so they always make sure that there's, an, there's people passing by on time, and if there's too many, they make sure they stop them. So it's something that would greatly be appreciated if they did. Live at the scene of the traffic jams, I'm Isabella Torres reporting for WJPS News, The Highlight. WJPS classrooms have new setups. Daisy Aquawil reports. Each student has to be around three feet distance. Students now have to sit in singular seats and rows instead of group tables. Many students and teachers feel different about the new class setup. I was a little frustrated. You know, I like to have my kids work in groups and the new setup makes that a lot more difficult. Teachers have masks nearby and need of extra ones. If students feel comfortable enough, they can bring their own technological device so they don't have to borrow one from school. The setup can be a bit harder for students to work in. I mean, I miss tables because I'm more of like a teamwork type of person rather than just working on my own. But I know, I mean, it's kind of nice because you have like your personal space and sometimes you need that. I feel like I get more help when I ask for it. Like, it's not too many people that our teachers are everywhere. Students should not be touching around objects in class. Even though the desk are three feet apart, masks should still be kept on at all times. In order for students to attend class in person, there is a new New York City Department of Education mandate that every every desk must be kept three feet apart for students and teacher safety. I'm Daisy Paul reporting for WJPS News, the highlight. Diego Hernandez tells us more about the new lunchroom procedures. As the new school year has started, students were told that they should follow special regulations during their lunch period. 
As all grades begin their lunch, after a while, students are then told that they are given a choice to go outside or not. These rules were placed into effect by the administrator of WJPS, Mr. Petrata. Eventually, we came up with the idea of splitting the grade so that it wasn't quite so busy in the cafeteria. The weather is a factor to whether or not the children are allowed to go out to the schoolyard. If the weather is not cooperative, then they are to report to the library. Students are able to be in groups if they please, although they will have to be socially distanced. Students are allowed to bring their technology outside as well, and other things to have as entertainment. Especially if you play sports, like back there, you can play football, or soccer, or volleyball. And while there are students who don't mind the regulations, there are some who think otherwise. I think the, the, the rules were better than the, first, the, the new one. No, I don't think we should keep it, because it really is up to the person whether or not they want to go to in the first place. As the lunch period ends, students are to head back into the building to resume the rest of their classes. These regulations will continue to be in effect until further notice. I'm Diego Hernandez, reporting for WGPS News, The Highlight. After the break, we learn how to bake a yummy treat. And we get a lesson in thankfulness. Mr. Vandura shares some COVID safety information. Anthony Cena reports. New York State Department of Education mandated new COVID safety measure rules for all New York City public schools. With these new rules, students are required to sit three feet away from each other. Um, when you're wearing a mask, obviously the, the viral molecules for COVID-19 are very small smaller than the pores of your mask. So it doesn't stop virus from coming out, but it stops your saliva, right? So the idea is that if you're talking to someone, you're, the, the spit from your mouth stays in your mouth, the spit from their mouth stays in their mouth, and those spit water droplets would have a larger, much larger amount of um, viral molecules than you know, just one or two that would pass through your mask. Hand sanitizer is, is pretty effective depending on the brand against um, viruses, so it should be about 99% effective. Um, which means that you should still wash your hands and things like that. But it's pretty good at sanitizing. The issue is you have to use a lot of it to really get every part of your hand. You know, I would only really sanitize my hands after touching something that someone else touched. So a doorknob, a pen, paper. So, you know, every other period, every three periods, depending on how often you share things with other people. Yeah. WGBS students or staff are required to wear a mask in entire school day. If you need a mask, masks are provided in each classroom. I'm Anthony Nassina, reporting for WJPS News, The Highlight. WJPS shares what we are thankful for. I'm thankful for my family members and my close friends. I'm thankful to you. I'm thankful for my sister, Leanna. I'm thankful for my friends and my family, for them like helping me um, get through tough parts of life and helping me throughout everything. One thing that I'm, that I'm thankful for is for everything that I have in my family and my friends. What I'm thankful for most, I'll say, is my family. Everybody's happy, everybody's healthy, everybody has a job, and we're all doing well. That's what I'm most thankful for this year. I'm thankful for, you know, all that I've been able to obtain in my life, and, you know, my friends, and, you know, how they helped me through, you know, all the bad days I've had, and it's just, it's really helped me. So. One thing I'm thankful for is my family and my friends. I'm thankful for my family. I am thankful for my boys, my family, good friends, good books, and good coffee. Kat Pappas teaches us how to bake a pumpkin pie. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make pumpkin pie. For this recipe, you will need sugar, cinnamon, salt, ginger, ground cloves, two large eggs, evaporated milk, canned pumpkin, and a pie crust. 
First, add 3 fourths cup of white sugar. Next, add 1 teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Then, add half a teaspoon of salt, a fourths teaspoon of ground cloves, and a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. After that, you can start mixing your dry ingredients. Mix until your dry ingredients look like this. Then, in a separate bowl, crack two large eggs and beat them until they look like this. After that, you're going to want to add your dry ingredients into the bowl with your eggs. After that, you're going to want to scoop your canned pumpkin into your mixture. Then, mix thoroughly. Next, slowly pour 12 ounces of evaporated milk into your mixture and stir. Stir thoroughly until your mixture looks smooth. Then, add a piece of parchment paper over a pan and place your pie on top to get ready for cooking. Place your pie into the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, your pie should look like this. If you have leftover mixture, you can make some pumpkin pudding. Let cool and enjoy. Here's the weekend weather forecast with our middle schooler of the week. For this weekend's weather forecast, on Friday there will be a high of 45 and a low of 31, with a 53% chance of rain. On Saturday there will be a high of 43 and a low of 29, with a 0% chance of rain. On Sunday there will be a high of 45 and a low of 29, with a 0% chance of rain. I'm Lena Soto, now back to the studio. And that's a wrap for our show. For Eurelia Ramirez and the rest of the WJPS News team, I'm Russell Guerra and thank you for watching.